we need serious action to save our fucking posterity, not a gang of right-wing wankers coming into our town trying to stir up trouble. And that's the end of this interview. Right, this is our YouTube channel, Edge of the Matrix. I'm here with Kieran Walsh. Would you like to introduce who you are, Kieran? Yeah, sure thing. I'm uh, Kieran Walsh, and I'm the chairperson of the Board of Trustees of these opportunities. Okay. And, uh, yeah. right, okay, and um, we seem to have a group of people here that are from, I believe, Oxford United against fascism, and then there's another group which are meeting, I believe, on Broad Street later, um, and they're from the people opposing the LTNs in the 15-minute series. So would you like to give us your take on it? Yes. Uh, uh, um, the LTNs, of course, were installed in East Oxford and of course they've caused um, some problems here in Oxford. A lot of people didn't like the way the scheme was uh, implemented without sufficient consultation and without perhaps other measures being introduced to reduce the flow of traffic. I think all reasonable people here understood that there's a lot of pollution in Oxford and that measures to, had to be taken to deal with the climate emergency as it is that we do need to reduce and, and also it'd be, it'd be good to reduce traffic and improve public transport so that's that's one side but the way it was imposed it was ju it just seemed to many people like a top-down measure and it caused a lot of frustration um, particularly for taxi drivers and delivery drivers and local businesses um, found it aggravating for certain and there were demonstrations in the town about it, trying to represent people's concerns to the council. Now the response wasn't great from the council and I think at then outside forces um, spotted a gap there that people were frustrated and not having uh, the grievances uh, represented and thought that we can use that, we can, we can capitalise on that. For, for the, and link it in with other agendas. Maybe people claim a libertarian agendas around it. And then the, all this stuff emerged about 15 minute late neighbourhoods. Then the council announced that they were going to put in some uh, bus gates to uh, reduce traffic further in certain areas and in, increase uh, the uh, speed of bus journeys. Um, and then people started saying, oh, this is this 15 minute uh, uh, city plan. But actually it's not. It's not. The, the 15 minute city plans are quite detailed plans involving a lot of infrastructure investment in them that hasn't gone on here. And, there's, and, and there has been no planning in that sense for a cordoning off of the city in terms of 15 minutes. It's ridiculous what people are saying. Some of the conspiracy theorists who, 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 are, who are suggesting that the neighbourhoods in Oxford might be turned into 15 minute gulags. It's absolutely ridiculous. We're nowhere near that. What we've got is a problem in one particular area of the city. And then we find out that this demonstration had been called by associates of Tommy Robinson. And we had to then warn the local uh, population of the dangers of having your own grievances exploited by outsiders who may be racist, who may be Islamophobic, who have maybe have really nasty agendas and they want to come into this town and gain publicity and look like heroes, standing up for the community. Well, these people coming into our town, uh, they don't care about our communities. Oxford is one of the most diverse cities in the UK with with people from all over the world settling here and different coherent communities and these people really do not know this city and do not care about the people who live in this city and these right wingers who are coming like the British Lions, the Heritage Party, like Associates of the English Defence League are not welcome in our city, not now not ever. They cannot solve our problems. We will solve our own problems in this city without help from outside racists, fascists and conspiracy theory nutcases. Yeah, and I'm saying that on behalf of myself 
as someone who's had problems with the LTNs, myself, who's had difficulties with the way that the local authority, county council and local council, have dealt with this, have dealt with this, but I object when outsiders who don't really understand the situation for me are trying to explain it. And, that, and that's, that's all I'm saying on the matter. So, uh, just ask a few questions. So, me, yeah, sure. so, do you think that all the people that are coming in that are protesting against things like so called 50 million cities or no. traffic outputs, do you think they're all like right No, right no, I don't. I don't. I think politics has got really murky over the last. You know, I mean, it, 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 it was going that way well before the pandemic set in. We've had social media has had a massive effect on on politics and really like erasing the boundaries between different sets of ideas. So now we've got people here who've got real concerns about threats to liberty who are coming to the town and people who are concerned about you know yeah about global I assure, about global domination people got to talk about globalism and there is a problem with the global elite and there's a problem with global capitalism but that that's got nothing to do with the social problems that we've got it wasn't george soros or, or, or klaus Schwab who dictated that we're going to have some bollards set up in east oxford no, it was a Conservative County Council a few years ago when they had money given to them by the government to set up those things. And they did it without considering the long-term consequences. And this has been one of the long-term consequences. And I really feel for people uh, who, who've got, you know, who are decent people, who've got legitimate concerns about threats to our liberties, who are, who are then also being exploited by right-wingers who, who want to go much further and it, it were, it were a real threat to our liberties in my view you know so that's why I had to warn um, and people of Asian and Muslim background taxi drivers delivery drivers etc we've got real concerns about it but I'm saying to them would you really want to go and stand shoulder to shoulder with an associate of, of Tommy Robinson so who, who are the associates of Tommy Robinson this guy Harvey it, it, he's called, he's the main organised behind it. it the, the, the tagline was uh, our communities, our choice. But, but this guy, uh, I think he's called James Harvey. James Harvey. James okay. Harvey. Yeah, oh, he's, he's, he's a friend of Tommy Robinson. Okay. And, to, and, and Tommy Robinson, Tommy Robinson has been spreading uh, publicity for this event himself. Okay. So, so he is directly connected for it, with it. Is that a direct connection or an indirect connection? It, well, it's a, 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 an indirect connection in the sense that he's friendly with this uh, Harvey quote, but he's also boosting it himself amongst his own following. Yeah, do you understand yeah. what yeah, I mean? No, I and I, and I have, I have yeah. severe problem with yeah. that. And I, I have to say to people, like, though your concerns are, are legit, and that, do you really want to stand with fascists? And, and a lot of people are saying, oh, I didn't realise that. I didn't realise that there were fascists and racists and Islamophobes involved with the organisation of this protest. Well, like, it sounds like, you know, yeah, yeah, it sounds like to me that you probably got a lot more yeah, yeah, in common think. with most of the people coming down that, that are opposing these 15-minute neighbourhoods from what you've said there because they have legitimate concerns just like you think. Yeah, yeah, but we're not having 15-minute neighbourhoods in this town. And, and with, the, you're being encouraged to come to our town like not under your own steam, a big coalition of people, like I said, some decent people, well-meaning people, are being drawn in by nasty right-wing elements who are controlling this. They're trying to focus a global uh, lens on Oxford and portray a misrepresentation of the town, right, to further this idea that we're all at immediate risk of being blocked into our neighbourhoods and, and given identity cards and locked in. It's not true, it's not true here at this time. The problem is specific and we need to deal with it locally. This this event will not help solve the bollard problem in East Oxford. It will not help solve any social division that's been caused by the LTNs in Oxford so far it will increase them because the council however many people turn up to that demonstration will ignore it because they will say it's a demonstration that's been manipulated by the right wing and conspiracy cranks 
and we can safely ignore that aggravation and that grievance. Can you and the elaborate, grievance yeah. elaborate a little bit more on conspiracy cranks. What do you mean by that? Conspiracy cranks, people who, who do believe that the likes of the World Economic Forum are pushing an agenda for 15 minute neighbourhoods, which has resulted in the bollards being erected in East Oxford. Now, that is a, a crankish conspiracy theory, and you know, these things. Is there any evidence of that? There is no evidence of that okay. whatsoever. What about, okay, so I think the World Economic Forum, they signed a memorandum of understanding with the United Nations in 2019. To yeah. further Agenda 2030. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Are aware of Agenda 2030? I'm, I'm aware of that. That has that. There's no evidence whatsoever that Conservative County councillors or Labour councillors who, who and and the and the uh, community amenity groups like the Cyclists Association in Oxford and the Pedestrians Association etc. who pushed for the LTN. There is no evidence whatsoever that they have any connection whatsoever with so what, the World Economic Forum. And let's, let's, get it, let's get it straight about the World Economic Forum. The World Economic Forum is not something like the IMF or the World Bank. It's not an international organisation with real power. It's a club for elite capitalists and states to get together and have a tete-a-tete -tete, you know, and put together policy documents. And it's useful because we see what the, what the elite intend going forward. But it's not it's not an organ in itself with direct powers to install bollards in East yeah. Oxford, we'll just, which is a cranky <laughs> conspiracy theory yeah. in my view. Well, well, I'm, well, I'm going to give you some of the evidence where they're linked. So, as I told uh, you, they, they signed a memorandum of understanding with the United Nations in 2019 to forward Agenda 2030, which is the Sustainable Development Goals. I've read about all of so, it. So you I've read about, I've read about and, all of it. And what they yeah. then did is that they said the way that we can implement this global change is through local change. So what they did is provide funding. So, so the government well, I believe in that, actually. Funding to local councils. Yeah. So, so the local democracies. The yeah. Local so democracy yeah. should drive yeah. any change that so there is. So it's not an unreasonable. Is. It's yeah. not an unreasonable policy. Yeah. No, you not know, in my What I'm just yeah. telling you is that's where the link comes to what you termed a conspiracy theory. I've given you the evidence yeah. there to show. Yeah, but this is where people I, and I, and I, and I, and I've rebutted it by saying there's no evidence whatsoever that there's any connection between that agenda or and the people who've been involved either in. Uh, the local councils in, in, in putting them in place or the local community associations that are pushed for them like yeah. the pedestrian yeah, they, they, the side. There's no, there's no connection. They were provided funding you know, from the central government to implement it locally. From the lo yeah, they were. They were. A conservative government like in a, in my view is that, is that this is tokenism. A conservative government released funds to local councils to implement these schemes. Like, they weren't prepared, re they're not prepared to invest in infrastructure of mass transit and public transport. They're not prepared to invest in the infrastructure and the necessities to change our way of life so that we can deal with this emergency. But what they can do is release money to councils to set up little gated communities which raise land price values in certain locales, which increase, uh, you know, you know, the profits of property owners and the capital asset portfolios of councils and businesses. Do you know what I mean? It was a tokenistic uh, measure and on its own it will do nothing whatsoever to uh, solve the problem and often it just displaces uh, traffic into other areas. Yeah, well, do you know like, what I mean? Yeah, and, that, and that's what happened. So, the, I mean, as I, I said, yeah, yeah, still underst there. understand, yeah, still we, under we understand people's grievances with yeah. the LTNs, uh, but also a lot of people understand that something needs to be done, and the LTNs were just part of a menu of possible measures, uh, and as 15 million neighbours, are a, men a menu of possible measures yeah. to deal with the problem. But I think, I mean, certainly everybody here agrees that we do have a problem that needs to be addressed. What's the best way of solving it? The best way of solving it is, uh, for a start, we need massive in, uh, investment in public transport. We do need to reduce 
uh, traffic. We re need to reduce our, our reliance on the car. Uh, we need to be much more energy efficient. There should be a, 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 a program of insulation of every home in the country. We should have a program to have solar panels put on the roof of every house in the country. We should have massive redistribution of wealth from the rich to the population to support these such schemes. We need serious action to save our fucking posterity, not a gang of right-wing wankers coming into our town trying to stir up trouble. And that's the end of this interview. Thank you. Thanks very much. There you have it. Anybody else? Just to point out as well that patriotic, patriotic alternative who are here today and we've heard that they're marching about the town and it makes me incandescent to think that fascists are marching about in our town. Patriot alternative were heavily involved in the attack on the hotel in Liverpool last week uh, that housed migrants. And we have so many migrants in Oxford. And we have hotels in Oxford housing migrants like that. And we do not want these fascists coming into our town, disrupting people's sense of security. It's absolutely outrageous. How dare they? How dare they think they can come to our town and solve problems in working class areas in our town when they've got people there who set fire to hotels housing migrants? It's unbelievable. Our communities, our choice. What temerity. Cheek. People, these people should be ashamed of themselves. There are well-meaning people who have been manipulated and exploited and they think they're standing up for our liberties by joining in with this demonstration. But what they're doing is they're undermining our liberties and they're undermining their, their own liberties. And this event should not be happening here. I'd like everyone to know that. And that migrants especially are welcome in, Ho in Oxford. Say it loud, say it clear, refugees are welcome here. Say it loud, say it clear, refugees are welcome here. Say it loud, say it clear, refugees are welcome here. Say it loud, say it clear, refugees are welcome here. And something else to mention as well, after the outrage of the young trans uh, trans person that was killed this week that many of the people here as well that came today also came for the drag queen story hour earlier in the year and are in intensely transphobic people those people are not welcome in our town which is welcome to transforming people. It's a rainbow city, as Sir Ramsey said, a city of sanctuary, an anti-racist city, and a city that's welcoming to trans people. And it's outrageous and disgusting that these hate mongers are walking around our streets claiming to be helping our communities. It's a lie. Cheers Billy, well said Billy, that's just right, these outsiders, nutcases, thinking they can come here and solve our problems, we can make Oxford a better place to live, we can make a better world, we want a better world, they don't want a better world, they want capitalism on steroids, don't they, that's what they want, they want, they want an homogenous society, most of them. Kick all the migrants out. Right, Britain. That's what I couldn't understand. They think, they think people of Asian background, Asian taxi drivers are going to go and stand next to a fellow with Keep Britain right tattooed on his forehead. It's madness. Absolute madness. And they're not welcome here. They're not welcome here. It's our problem and it's our problem to solve. And we're going to build a better world from the bottom up. That's how. And we'll make them change the city in a better way, in a consensual way, hopefully. Uh, rather than have fools like this who want to come in, make our lives better, make our lives a misery, as Billy just said. Thanks very much, everybody.